Hey everybody, my name is Tisha Spencer and I am the owner of this channel and this is a travel agent's guide. Now the purpose of this um, whole channel that I have is really just to educate travel agents or those who want to become travel agents. This is not strictly just for um, people who are agents, but maybe people thinking about agents and also to educate the community at large what travel agents do and things of that nature. So. Today's conversation is really going to be about, um, it's an update because I've been with this particular host agency now going on about almost four and a half years. And I really thought I should come back after my video I did about two years ago about um, why I joined a host agency versus starting my own. And also give you some tips as to things you should be asking before you join a host agency. Now I want you to understand, you know, a lot of people have, you know, looked at different agencies and you know, whether they want to be a retail agent or whether they want to work from home type situation. I have personally never been an agent that worked in a retail spot. I've always been a home-based travel agent and I just did my work wherever I had Wi-Fi. And it was great for me because, you know, I had a job, I had activities, I had friends and I could travel and work my business anywhere. Now, some people don't believe in what they call the MLM agents because they believe that, you know, they're just here to go ahead and just earn income. But I want you to understand that not every host agency is an MLM and not every host agency that works with a network marketing company is also a network marketing company. I can tell you for me, the company that I am with is a host agency that works with a marketing company to grow their company. Kind of like how corporations will get third party human resource departments to go out there and take care of all their hiring and things of that nature. So we're just going to jump right into why you'd want to start out with, as a host agent first. If you are brand new to the whole travel industry, you've never had a travel business before, you know, starting with a host agency is really great because it'll allow you the ability to learn the things you need to know in order to be successful and just travel alone. We're not even talking about the day-to-day -day things that a regular business needs to do. We're just talking about the regular things you need to do as a travel agent. Now, Thousands of agents definitely use host agencies to help them with the day-to-day -day needs of travel. And, you know, each host provides different offerings to the advisors. Now, I can only really speak about the one that I'm with now versus a lot of the other ones out there because I've never really worked with the majority of them except maybe one, but they've changed a lot since I used to work with them. So any information I had from almost 10 years ago is probably not accurate. Now, I do recommend starting out with a host agency just because, you know, if you're new to the business, you know, finding the right one is going to be, um, it's going to be a real involved process. You know what I mean? So I do recommend having a host agency, but I don't recommend just jumping up and joining with everyone that, you know, sends you the best email, or you see the best ad or the flashiest ad. You want to go ahead and, you know, ask some questions, things you should be asking yourself. You know, like some of the things you should be asking is basically how much research should you do before selecting one? Now, I want to understand that, you know, host agency research is probably one of the most time consuming tasks you want to take. Just because there's so many agencies out there for one, you know what I mean? You want to make sure that the one that you joined is going to be a fit for you, but you want to make sure that you do your due diligence, but it's equally as point to make sure you're not stuck in just, you know, analysis paralysis. You know, where we're, all we're doing is just research and research and research, research it, but you don't make a decision. You know what I mean? Now, when I made my decision to move over here, I did have some questions. Um, I was nervous, but I was going off of um, the strength of one of my leadership from the previous organization that I was with. Now, yes, my host agency does have a partnership with a network marketing company, but we're two separate companies. So we're only talking about the host agency side. So when I joined, the first thing I said was, I need to know that they're serious about training. So they put me on a phone call with the president and co-founder to answer any question I might have. I really put him through a process like I was interviewing him, even though I was one of his um, independent agents. But you know, it's hard to give a specific measure of how much research you should really be doing. But here's a few things that you can do. If you're only talking to like, or dealing with or searching with a handful of hosts and aren't familiar with some of the terms of process processes, it's best to keep researching, you know, it's one of those things like if you read a website and you don't understand the terminology, you can't figure out how to get paid, you don't understand how things work, you know, that might not be the place for you. 
But if you have like, I'm going to say 17 spreadsheets and are like sweating to get every single detail, you're stuck. And I know people like that who get, they get into research mode, they get so stuck in research that every little thing, like, oh my God, I got to figure out what this means. And I got to figure out what this means. I want you to understand, there's a lot of things about these host agencies you're really not going to learn until you become a part of the host agencies. They're not going to give you everything up front. What I suggest is, you know, narrow down three to five companies that really, really strike you, that really interest you and things of that nature and start, and start, you know, doing some research. Now for certain companies, a lot of companies now, they have somebody who, you, who basically quote unquote, will can recruit you, a sponsor. It doesn't matter where you are, there could be a possibility that you will be signing up under somebody who is there to help guide you towards your success. Now, I truly believe you have an option to join under anybody you want to, because this is going out to all agents, whether you are going to join under a host agency where you have a sponsor or whether you go out there, host agency, and you're completely by yourself you know, and you rely on the company to do your training. You want to make sure that you're going to get that training and whoever you decide to partner with is somebody that is going to be there to educate you, has the training, and has been where you're trying to go. Now, you want to make sure that the culture and culture is really important for me because you want to make sure that the culture of the company is someplace that you would want to be just like with going for a regular job you go for an interview you go to the offices and you're just like wow these offices are not really kept up everybody looks sad it's really dark you start to think is this the environment i want to kind of be in now with a host agency especially since most of it is done online it really is hard sometimes to tell the uh, culture, but they'll have tons of, most of them have tons of videos and different things that you can see. They have stuff on Facebook, social media. You can talk to other agents who are inside of the organization and really ask those hard questions. Now, another question that, you know, a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, whether or not there are different host agencies and how do you know which one is right for you? Now, I want you to understand one thing that all agencies have in common is that they have an agent network with their accreditation number. So like the host agency I'm with, they have their own IATA number, their own CLIA number, et cetera, that we use. Now we do pay a monthly expense in order to be able to utilize their numbers. And that's about where the similarities kind of end. You know, hosts come in all different flavors. You could be a franchise host where you kind of buy your own agency. And I've seen those prices as high as $13,000. Um, you have boutique hosts, which are really small and intimate. And you may work from home or you may work in a retail office, but it's really small and very specific. You have hosts that have different tech and marketing stacks, which is what we have. We have a lot of marketing and techniques and technical ways. Um, not like technical, like computer technical, but like techie, like online and apps and things like that that you can use. You want to make sure that you want to align with a company that's going to meet with your personal expectations of where you want to be. Now, things you should know well, I want to say things you should know. Think questions that you should really ask yourself or know about yourself as an agent before coming to host. You know, the thing is that you have to think about, you know, what you need as an agency. So like, what do you need from your host agency? For some people, it's going to be training. I want to have, you know, tons of free training available to me. Some people are more concerned with how, mon how many um, fam trips or discounts can I get, which I'm be honest with you, is not something to really go by because a lot of those you have to earn them and they're not just given to you. Some people go by, you know, how long has the company been involved? You know, how long has the company been here? Has it always been a home-based agency or did it start out as a retail and then they just branched out? Are they debt-free? You know, do they have investors they have to go back to? You know, what kind of awards are they winning? Things of that kind of nature, but it all kind of depends on you. You know, some people even more concerned about, you know, like what is my commission cut? You know, am I making good amount of money or a little bit amount of, amount of money? What's the commission with the suppliers? Can you kind of figure that out? But the best thing to do is just write it down, make a list, prioritize, and then figure out the top five things that are most important to you. And then figure out which of the things on your list is really a deal breaker. And we all have different things that will make it a deal breaker or not in order for you to join a certain specific host agency. You know, you might like agency one, but they want to charge you $50 extra a month just to get training where agency two will charge you, you know, zero to get the same free training. You know, you know, and those things can help direct your conversation with the, with your, um, with the representatives of the host agency to try to figure out which one is best for you. And honestly, there's truly no wrong decision. It's really about what's going to work for you and to make sure that you're happy as a future agent. Now, 
there are definitely a lot of things online that's going to list host agencies, top 10 agencies and stuff like that. But I want you to understand this host agencies that are not even listed on there that are not even counted for, you know, so sometimes I don't agree with those lists because they leave off a lot of agencies and some, not all, but some of those websites I discovered are basically the hosts submitted to be on those lists. It wasn't a real rating. It was more of like a submission type thing. You know, so you want to make sure that um, you look at things like that. Some of the things people look at is whether or not E and O insurance is in, is included for the agents, not for us. It's included for us, and we're allowed to, if we want to, to go ahead and get more if we choose. But we don't have to get stuff like that. Now, some people say, well, what if I join, you know, a host agency? I start working with them. You know what? I don't like it. And that's okay, but that's something you really should look at in the beginning to find out because some agencies have it set up where, you know, once you get started, you have three days to figure out if this is what you want to do or they'll refund you. My agency does 30 days. Some agencies don't do anything, but it is okay if you join an agency and you don't like it. I joined several agencies before I got to this one and it was different things for a lot of them why I chose not to stay with those companies. And it's okay, don't let anybody belittle you to say that this is not the agency for me, this is not what I thought it was going to be. But just understand that you do need to give it some time to really test it out to figure out if this is something that you wanna do. So you know, when you sign up with a host agency, make sure you read through the contract so you understand what happens to your bookings and outstanding commissions if you decide to leave. Some agencies will allow the bookings to be released. Now I'll tell you my story. When I was with an agency and I switched over to another one, I had bookings. I had to get my first host agency that I originally booked with to agree to release those bookings into the hands of my new host agency so I can get paid. And I'm not going to say it was easy, but that's all I had to do. Now, some help, some will help you transfer bookings and others requires the bookings to stay with them. But I'll be honest with you, what's more important, a couple of hundred dollars or your happiness? You know what I mean? Some people, what they'll do is they'll stay with the original host agency until commissions are paid while currently working in the new host agency. Some people choose to do that, but it's kind of up to you on, on what you should do. But in the end, a host agent can't have a non-compete with you. And in the spirit of being an independent contractor, you should be able to leave whenever you feel like it's not a good fit for you anymore. And I really don't know of any agency that sits there and says that, you know, if you leave us, you can't join another agency for X amount of years. Now, here's the next question. And I hear this a lot when I'm talking to people who are thinking about becoming, you know, an independent agent versus, you know, going at it alone. You know, if you want to go at it alone, you want to think about your exit plan. Now, some people go at it alone after they've been in a host agency for a while, which I think is the best option to go with. Because when you join a host agency, you have the support of the agency, the teams around you, and so much more. So you can learn the inner workings of how to do the commissions, how to get paid, how to do the booking. And then you get that experience that you need. And when you choose to go ahead and um, break ties with the host agency and go straight, you want to make sure that you need to familiarize yourself with what happens to commissions and bookings when you leave, you know, will strongly influence your, um, your exit plan. I want you to understand that some agencies are open with their hosts about going independent and some slowly phase out by putting any new bookings on their accreditation number and stay with the host until the commissions are paid out, which is what I said, I stated earlier about staying in there like that. Now understand that if you are trying to go at it on your own with no host agency and you're going out there to get your own IATA number, your own clear number, those numbers are not free. And the commission rates tend to start at about 5%. Now the last I checked to get an IATA number, it could cost as much as $6,000 to um, get registered and get your company set up with, through IATA and have all of that set up because you have to have an IATA number to book um, vacations and stuff, and you need a clear number to book cruises. So you have to obtain both of those. And for a lot of the suppliers, they're not going to put you out with 10, 15, 16% commission as you get with a host agency because you first have to build up all of your bookings. Now, I don't want you to understand, going out requires a bit of legwork. You know, you got to get a new accreditation, your IATA numbers, your clear numbers, your business numbers, all of that stuff. You have to register all those numbers for any seller of travel numbers. And depending on where you are in the um, United States, you have to separately register to sell travel in certain states as well. You also have to find and join a consortium. Then you have to register your new accreditation numbers with all of the vendors and getting set up with their portals, plus getting your own E&O insurance 
Plus you have to get a working website that works right. You gotta get accounting set up. You gotta get um, banking set up because you gotta separate all of that. You know, so there's a lot more work into it when you try to go at it at your own versus starting out with a host agency because they take care of all of that for you. Now, does every agent need a host agency? No, you don't, you don't. Some, 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 some people are just great at it. You know what I mean? But for those of us who are not that great and that not that detail organized and stuff like that, you know, agencies, I want you to know, have a wide variety of needs, business models and vendors that they sell. And a host isn't going to be the answer for everyone. And that's fine. I met a couple coming back from one of my trips and they, they, they was with a host for a while. And then they ventured out and all they focus on is all inclusive trips to the Caribbean. Because they said that once they got the IYAD and got everything set up, their commissions was low. So they had to really focus and work extremely hard to go from 5% to 15% because your commission is based basically on the volume that you do as a travel agent, the bookings and stuff like that. Now, if you have high sales and established vendor relationships in our experience, you may decide it makes more sense for you to go on your own. But just remember that when you do go on your own, there's a lot of extra stuff that you have to start dealing with and um, may not be ready for it, you know? So just make sure that this is something that you wanna deal with. Now, I understand that, you know, some people say that they are, they have their own agency, but I want you, I learned and I didn't understand, and I still don't understand the, the problems, but there are agents out there who claim that they have their own agency, they're all set up, they have their business, but they don't have their own IATA number and they don't have their own CLIA number. They're using another host agency to actually supply them with that number. So they're really just independent travel agents that have their own business, their own setup, their own name, they're doing everything in their own offices. They have um, independent agents or ICs under them, but they don't own an IATA number or a CLIA number because they're paying to use somebody else's, which is fine. I just don't I never understand why there's such a clash about whether or not you pay for an IATA number or you get it from a host agency. We're all doing the same work. We're all traveling and we're all having fun and we're making money from it. Now, is that I want you to understand is that there's so many opportunities to becoming a, uh, a travel agent. There's so many different ways that you could go ahead and um, get started. You know, some people do not like the idea of getting started with when it comes to, um, you know, network marketing and stuff like that. But I want you to understand there's nothing wrong if you partner up with a host agency that's connected to that. But I'm definitely going to talk about that in a different topic because I don't want to confuse people or anything like that. But I want you to understand that being a travel agent is fun. You know, you work as much as you want. You work as little as you want. You make as much money or as little money as you want. You can do it um, full time. You can do it part time. You know, you can specialize in anything that you want to specialize in. I have people that specialize in everything from wellness travel to romance travel, to just cruises, and some just do certain cruise lines. Some people focus just on one country, you know, so it's, un it's infinite possibilities of what you can do, you know, and, you know, having a home-based business works for a lot of people because it gives them the freedom to do it when they want to and how they want to versus having to do a full-time nine-to-five type situation. A lot of people that I know who started in travel agents you know, like years ago, they're now doing this full time because they're bringing in enough income. They don't have to work a full time job anymore. But that does take time. I want you to understand that by becoming a home based travel agent, you're not going to start earning four or five, six figure checks every single month. One of the things a lot of people forget is that we don't get paid generally until after the trip has happened, you know, and you have to build your clientele, build your relationships, you know, create those relationships with your suppliers you know, and you have to learn and educate yourself. So hopefully this is something that, you know, was good for you guys that you learned a lot. And if you have any questions, just comment below. I'll get a notification and I'll come in here and I'll go ahead and um, make sure to comment. Uh, make sure that before this is all said and done that you like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I hope you love my lovely background and enjoy the rest of your day. And hopefully I'll see you traveling with me. Talk to you later.